and welcome to Wine and Watercolors with Wendy. Um, today we are going to do this lovely uh, violin. We're going to put some fun stuff on it and we're going to play with color and do a lot of really bright colors. Not a lot too, but I like to pretend. Um, and we're pairing tonight's painting with a lovely 19 Crimes 2018 Cabernet Sauvignon. If you have the app, um, you can actually make those little guys talk, which is quite fun. Um, paper, 140 pound Canson cold press. Uh, we're going to use Dr. PH Martin's Amber Yellow Cyclamen. You wanna make sure you shake both of these up really well because they settle at the bottom and then you don't lose, you don't have as much pigment. <clears throat> Um, we're going to have some Dr. P.H. Martin's Blue Proof White. Now, <laughs> I did not close my Blue Proof White last time I used it. And so the top is all gross. So I'm going to peel all that out right now. And it is serves as a cautionary tale to remember to put the lid on your Blue Proof, proof White. <laughs> so now I have a pile of white sitting over there on my paper towel, but that's okay. I'm going to put the lid on it now so I don't forget. <laughs> Um, and we're going to use some, um, premium watercolor. <clears throat> I don't even know what brand this is. Um, it's Payne's gray. It's in a tube instead of the, um, liquids. It's just going to be for some, some of our darks to make sure they're nice and dark. I'm getting paint, white paint all over myself. So give me a second. Ha <laughs> ha. All right. So I have uh, hopefully figured out the camera so I'm not painting off anymore. Um, I think I have it. So this edge is where the edge of the camera goes. <clears throat> it's just my iPhone, so give me a little credit. Um, I'm gonna use two brushes, a big and a little. Um, you want a small brush for this, especially for your white outlines. Uh, go ahead and Get your image transferred onto your watercolor paper. You can use graphite paper. You can use a light box. You can use a window. Put it on light. Mine's on kind of dark so you can see it. If you don't like the bow, leave the bow off. Again, this is all your stuff, so you can do whatever you want. Um, and so this is like a bright fuchsia and orange. And we're just going to really do the base of this violin super bright and fun. And then I'll come back in with the Payne's Gray and um, add in some of the dark spots. And then after everything's dry, we'll come back in with your Bleed Proof White and um, put some of the really pretty stuff in. So we're gonna just get a little smidgen of that. My plates, if you've painted with me before, they're just from a uh, the grocery store. They're just plastic dinner plates. Um, I uh, don't clean them every day. So I actually have like a pile right over here to the side of not cleaned um, palettes. I, when I run out of the 10 that I bought, then I wash them and start over again. So um, when you're doing this, if you don't like this edge here, you don't need to put it on. If you don't like the chin rest, you don't need to put it on. Um, I have it on, so it makes me think of my student violin that I have at home or upstairs because I've been <laughs> teaching myself how to play the violin this year, which has been quite fun for all those involved in the family, let me tell you. <laughs> so we're just going to start with some of this pink. It's a very purpley pink. I'm going to go pretty bright with it. Um, the brighter you go, the better the colors are going to look um, when you put in your bleed proof white, go right over things. I'm just gonna put some of that on. It's pretty basic. I'm gonna rinse that out and I'm gonna kind of blend it out a little because I had a lot of paint on there. We just wanna really accentuate this bright, bright color. Okay. 
And there's a little piece that kind of goes out a little bit right there that's not part of the back. Feel free to paint over everything. And then you're just gonna grab some of the orange and just add that in. Go right over top of what you were doing before. You wanna work kind of quickly. Um, this stuff will blend, so it's not that big of a deal, but I just really want this combination of orange and pink. Um, I'm really kind of digging it. So I'm gonna pull that up in here and I'm gonna, gonna blend that out a little bit. There's a lot of pink in it, that's okay. I'm leaving the neck of this violin alone. Um, I don't want to paint it the bright color. We're gonna use the darker paints, gray for that. So we've lost quite a bit of that orange. So we're gonna add some more in, just up in that section and just kind of go through here. And then you wanna leave this little fret open. You can paint right over the strings. A um, little trick that I did with the strings was I used an envelope so that I could <laughs> make sure my lines were straight because if your strings aren't straight, it looks a little funny. So I'm bringing this over to the other side. This is really blatant how it goes right into the orange. So we're going to just kind of blend that out a little. I just don't want hard edges. I just really want... I want bright colors. And obviously this is not a realistic painting because um, most of us don't have pink and orange violins. If we do, you're awesome. Show me a picture, that'd be excellent. So toning it down a little because I think it's a little dark on the other side, but that's okay. And then trying to get these edge lines. It's no worries if you go out of the lines a little bit. No one cares. So I used to go to art galleries and paint and teach painting classes, but, um, and this probably won't age well in the video, but with the COVID-19, the lovely, lovely COVID-19, I can't go anywhere, so I can't teach anybody in person. So I'm going to paint anyway, so I might as well video it and let you guys watch, see what I'm doing. Maybe learn, maybe not. So that was some more of the pink. And then we're just gonna blend that down. There's no orange in there, so we need to get some orange in. And we're gonna blend that out. Now you can always do this by turning it on its side. And I know I'm going outside of the frame a little bit here, um, but you can turn it on its side and do like a sunset theme and leave the bow off and just kind of do some sort of fun thing with your violin. It's your painting, so um, I like to encourage people to just kind of go crazy and then show me what you did so that I can be inspired. I decided it was too light up there, so I'm putting in a little bit more. Okay, now um, I'm gonna make the neck um, and the base in the paints gray, but I want this top piece up here. About right here. We're just gonna put a little line where I think the end of the um, the fret section goes. And we're gonna make that some of the bright colors. And this is kind of how my violin looks. Um, if yours doesn't have this curled over edge, 
or the one you're painting doesn't have a curled over edge and you don't want to do it, then don't. Um, then we're going to do some orange in here. Let's add a little bit more orange here. Got a little bit too much water on there right now, so I'm going to dab it on the paper towel and then soak some of it up. There we go. That helps. So it's bleeding from the side pieces and that's totally cool. Um, a little bit more pink. And as you can see, I put way too much paint on my palette. Um, the good thing about watercolors is they don't dry out. Well, they do, but you can just reactivate them with water. So I think I'm going to play with these pegs and do one on each side, the bright purpley pink color, and then clean my brush and do the other one in the bright orange color. And they're all a little different because um, you twist the pegs to uh, get your violin in tune. Don't ask me exactly how, because mine is never in tune. Um, and then uh, you, so they're all turned a little bit different. They're not all flat towards the front. So we're gonna do this right here, like this. And then we're gonna grab some of the pink. Just blend that up. And then I'm going to clean it. I'm going to start on the top with the pink. It's more like a fuchsia. I know I keep calling it pink. Um, it's called cyclamen, but it's a really bright fuchsia -y color. And I'm gonna get some of the orange and we're gonna blend that down. So I'm giving the bow um, more of an ombre effect. So it starts in the bright pink, kind of blends through and then it ends in the, the orange. It's not a perfect ombre, but it'll work. I have a chihuahua that came in to say hi. If he walks underneath my feet, you might see him. Now this part of the bow is usually silver, so we're gonna probably do that in the paints gray, and I think I'll do um, the bow string in the paints gray, even though uh, they're typically horsehair, so they're typically cream colored. So I think we're done with that part. I think it looks pretty good. I'm going to get some of the paints gray. Now, I don't want this super dark in some spots, so I'm going to put some water in it. Um, the two paints can be super dark and then they can fade out. It really depends um, on how much water you use. And then you'll you'll start to notice they have different, different consistencies. A lot of watercolor artists will tell you um, it's like heavy cream skim milk. I just go by what color looks right for what I'm trying to do, if it's light enough or if it's dark. So here it's really light, here it's really dark. That's how I'm gonna play this game. Okay, so then we're gonna go right in here. And come down. Now this kind of sticks up a little. So you want your edges to be darker then your center. And I think I went way too light with that, but let's see what happens if I blend that out a little. We'll come back and put some more dark around the outside of that. So we're gonna get a little darker here. This is the chin rest and it also, it sticks out. 
So we just want to make it look like it's sticking out a little. We're nice and dark underneath it, so it'll look like it's got a little bit of a concavity. Stop flashing, buddy. Okay. And then we're going to blend that out. Ah! So this is what happens when you put your finger in something. Um, I think we'll just do some spatter at the end, kind of solve all that. Uh, you can try to fix it with the Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. I don't have one. So what I'm going to do here is on this part, I'm going to extend this down and just make the handle of the bow longer. And a little thicker, so it's not quite so delicate, but that's okay. We're just fixing a problem. It's really not that big of a deal. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll move this little prong piece down further. But to avoid having that happen again, I'm going to turn the painting over <laughs> so that I don't stick my hand in the wet paint again. Um, it happens, it's not that big of a deal. So I'm gonna get some more of this uh, Payne's Gray and I'm gonna do the fret board. Now you might lose where your strengths are gonna go. That's okay, we can just put them back in later. Also, if you do get paint on your finger, make sure it's dry before you stick it back down on your paper or you're just gonna have the same thing happen again and you're gonna get really frustrated with yourself and then you'll throw it in the, in the trash. We don't want you to throw it in the trash. At least try to do the whole thing first and then you can throw it away if you want. Um, so I like how that looks. I'm going to set aside this brush and leave it sitting in the water. Uh, you shouldn't do that, but it's a lot of things we shouldn't do that we do anyway. I'm going to get some more of the Payne's Gray. I'm going to get it darker this time. Less water, more paint. It's the easiest way to remember that. And I'm going to try to do this little cutout. And as you can see, this Payne's Gray gets almost black if you uh, work it right. So then we're gonna come out here on that little piece. Let that stick out a little. And we're gonna come bring this up. And it's skipping a little, which means I need to add water. I'm trying to leave that little piece of pink that sticks out. Then you can turn your page sideways. So again, it's, I see my mistake and yeah, I'll get over it. Okay, and if you see I'm having trouble with coverage, it's because I don't have any water. And if you heard the barking in the background, that was the dog and my husband. Not sure why they're barking at each other. Okay, so there that goes. And that looks a lot better. Um, gives us a little more dimension. Um, I'm thinking this part is still a little light, so I'm gonna, I just have this brush in my hand. So I'm just gonna use it because that's what I've got. I'm gonna darken this up. Not completely, still want a little variation. I'm making sure I don't stick my hand in this paint again. Okay, 
so that looks a lot better. I like how it's kind of on one side, so it sticks up like on that side. So I might just pull this across. There we go. And that darkens that up nicely. And we're gonna do the same on the, the neck. Just on one side. Just makes it look like it's sticking out from the violin a little bit, so kind of like that look. Oh, well, you can't do that because I'm all done. And it's definitely going to stay skinnier at the top and then get a little wider as it goes down. <clears throat> I'm getting more paint to darken it up because I have more water than paint right now. There we go. So you're just going faster all the time and go wherever you need to go. Okay. So that actually gave it a ton of dimension and it was real simple to do. So we're going to do a little bit more of that on here. And again, if you want to switch to a bigger brush, you can. I just am being lazy, and I just didn't. Okay. Um, there's two little things, three more things that I want to have the dark colors. I want to have... Um, so these are, I don't actually remember what they're called. I'm, I'm a really bad violin student. <laughs> I'm turning my page because of, that is still wet. Um, but this is the opening that the sound comes out of. And I can't really remember what it's called. I'll have to look that up. And it's kind of like an ornate S that's obviously backwards. Okay. And then we need to do the one on the other side. I need a little bit more water. That looks pretty good. Um, and now this is just a skinny little, it's almost like a cardboard piece. I know it's wood, but it doesn't feel like it. It gives the strings a little bit of a bow. So it's flat on one side and rounded on the other. If yours doesn't show that in the picture, it's totally fine to just readjust the drawing. So there we go, that's our violin. Oh, the pegs, <laughs> forgot about the pegs. So we made it fun on the outside of the pegs. We want to at least have the pegs attached. And I'm keeping this pretty simple because a lot of what's going to be fun about this is when we put white on top of this and um, really have that white color start popping. So your bowstring is actually flat and it's made up of a ton of horsehairs. I'm gonna again, turn it over to try to do it at an angle so the whole thing stays in the frame. So it's gonna get really skinny right here. 
So I'm gonna just do a lighter pressure. Then when it gets up here, I'm pushing a little harder to make it thicker. And once again, I need more water. If your paint starts doing this and you don't want it to, that just means you are using spit straight paint and not enough water. So again, it's skinny and then it's gonna get fat. Now we're readjusting because I made a mistake and we're bringing this all the way down here. And if you didn't make that mistake, you don't have to. Okay, I'm just gonna come and clean up these skip marks a little. Let it get skinny, okay. So then it's got this little metal piece that attaches it, the bow, the string to the wooden part of the bow. You don't touch the string part because your fingers and oils will make it so it doesn't catch. It's usually really, really shiny, unless yours is really, really old like mine is. Um, so we're just gonna do a little like this. And I'm leaving a highlight to make it shiny. It's not gonna be perfect because I completely moved it from where it was supposed to be. I'm gonna pull that out a little. So there's still a little bit of a look of a shine. So then I'm gonna take my trusty piece of paper towel that does not have bleed proof white all over it and dab into that a little to give it like a little bit of a reflection. I love to use paper towels as like my next paintbrush. Okay, so that's wet. We're gonna turn it over so I don't keep putting my hand in the wet stuff. Um, we feel pretty dry here and up here. So let's start putting on some of the white highlights and see how that works and hopefully it really brightens this up. So I just paint directly out of my jar of bleed proof white. Uh, and I'll probably just keep, start calling it white because adding all the eyes to it is just annoying me. There we go. <laughs> okay. So I did a staff, a travel staff, and I made it kind of curly. So I'm using my really thin brush I'm gonna get a little bit of water. I'm actually gonna put that on my plate, clean it and, and do it that way. If you don't have this white, but you have an acrylic or gouache, it'll do the same thing. So you don't have to stress yourself into buying materials you don't have, especially if you're under quarantine right now, like I am. I'm not under quarantine, stay at home order. Let me make that sound better than it. It was yeah. sounding. All right, so then this one curves a little too. Well, you can tell me because last time I didn't know it, and I was right next to it, and then got cracked by the wind. And there we go. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna just do this with light pressure. Um, these don't have to be as skinny. Our lines for the Strings will probably be pretty skinny, but we'll figure that out when we get to them. All right. Left and then right. Okay. I'm checking to make sure that's in frame. What you guys didn't see when we first started is this is um, up on a like stand on my dining room table where, so I can't see it. I can't see what it looks like or anything else. And I have to climb up on my stool to get it in frame and uh, start the camera. So when it started, you had my feet in the bottom of the picture. 
I will be editing that out, but I thought you might find that funny that I had feet a picture. Now I can't do a travel clap upside down, so I'm going to wait to do that to when I can do it right side up. And if you don't like my swirlies, you can feel free to do your own swirlies. You can also do flowers. You can do butterflies. You can cover the whole thing in music notes. You cannot do this part if you don't like this part. If you don't like this look, that's totally fine as well. Um, I'm gonna put little white dots here for where the strings attach into the bottom of that board. Okay, we're doing some more swirlies. And I put them on here because, okay, I'm gonna be honest, sometimes when I'm doing swirlies, I, I lose focus and stop making pretty swirlies and just kind of start slapping stuff on paper. So for me, it's better to have an idea of what I'm doing. This would also look really pretty in a silver. If you have a silver wash or something along those lines. If it doesn't match the lines, it's okay. Gave him another swirl that came down like that. And then there's another one up and through and ends up here. Oh, this one continues out. Oops. I will say random swirlies are not my strong suit. I usually overwork them and do too much. So they don't always look right. Darken this up. Darken, I'm gonna lighten this up. My white got a little grayed out. I didn't like that. Now I'm gonna go in and um, because I am right-handed, I'm going to start at the left and work my way across so I don't stick my hand in paint. I cannot do one of these upside down. So I'm doing my treble clef. And when I draw it with a pencil, I can do it all in one stroke, but I can't do it with this. I do apologize. There. Okay. So then um, I've got an eighth note here. Uh, it's an A. In case you wanted to suddenly learn how to read music. I don't have any sharps or flats in this, so we're just doing it in a standard key. It's an eighth note, but bring it all the way up and then it has a little whoosh. And that's actually played on this string. Um, the third one over, that's how you play that one. You, on, on an open string. And when you're learning, the open strings are your friends, they are your favorite. So then this one is an F, if you remember the F-A-C-E. And it's a 16th note. You may not be able to read that because of the lines. 
I'm going to do a pair of eighth notes here. An E, which is also an open string, and then a C. I don't know why I'm bothering to tell you what the music notes are. Um, because I feel like everybody should. Uh, and I like uh, when they're connected because they have that nice long bar that really looks kind of cool. Okay, so I'm thinking it looks a little bland. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put some flowers or some greenery. I'm gonna just do a little leaf here. And I may hate this when I'm done and oh well. I'm gonna do a little leaf and then here we'll have a leaf that comes out this way and another one over here and while it's kind of gone off I'll cover those in um now I can't just throw one random leaf in there or that's just gonna look really strange so I think maybe Maybe I'll put another one right down here where it's looking a little open. I feel like there's not enough of the decorative stuff, so we're gonna maybe put in some more swirlies. Like I said, I tend to overwork it, so if you don't wanna do this, don't. But if you like it, go crazy. It's totally fine. <clears throat> Then we'll do another one right here. And maybe some dots. I would say to put in some sharps, but then it would just look like a hashtag and that would look weird. You want to try to not put them all in the same place and try to spread them out. Don't get too repetitive with your work. Okay. And then since we made this one really big, why don't we put like a big swirl on it? And it kind of went off and that's cool. I like that. It's just like, it's a big swirly S for Smalley. Ha ha. Um, and then I'm gonna do a little line right here and a dot. Okay, and then I'm gonna leave the bow alone because if I do any more, it's gonna look a little funny. And maybe do, actually I'm gonna do a leaf. I need more water. She looks really cute. Um, I don't think I want to do it anymore. So now I need to put in my violin strings. Everything seems dry enough that I can put my hand down. 
Um, this is all however you want to do it. If you can still see your lines, great. If you can't fake it, um, you can go up and go straight across. I suck at that. So I will probably do really light moving my hand across. And if it comes up, it comes up. And actually your G string stops right there. Um, it wraps around that peg. And then this oh. next one is your D string. And you wanna go light. If it skips a little, that might look really cool. And you can see it doesn't show up super well in the lighter colors. And this is your D string. It actually goes up to this one. And there's a peg that goes inside. Then your A string. I know this because I keep breaking all my strings and I have to keep replacing them. Is my violin does not tune well and the pegs don't hold in place. So then I tighten it to try to get that hold of place and then my string snap. It's super fun, I tell you. Um, don't do the A string a lot, but I think it's all the way up here too. And then you have your E string, which is your most delicate, teeny tiny little string. Who knew you're gonna turn into a watercolor tutorial and learn all about the violin. Okay, and then I will stop there. See, they don't need to be perfect. They're kind of thick and thin and it's totally okay. Um, one thing that is bothering me just a touch, and this is me, and if it's not bothering you, don't worry about it, is when I was doing some stuff over here on the edge, it actually ran over into the shadow section, and I don't like that. I want that to be perfectly shadowed. So there we go. Now, if you have these smears and you can't stand them, I'm gonna just let it go. You can always get your brush wet, dip it in paint, and then smack it on your smack it on your finger and do spatters. Um, I'm kind of digging the way this looks, even with the smear, it's totally fine. I can also take that out in Photoshop um, when <laughs> I scan in my image. Um, don't forget to sign your painting. I usually like to uh, sign, it almost incorporates it into the painting so people can't just cut out my signature. So I'm gonna do it right here on the side of the violin so they can't just cut out the bow. And I don't sign with a brush. I use a, a Tombow pen. So there you have it. Oh, we forgot our final step, which I can see what my husband thinks. Hey honey, what do you think? It's totally smeared. Other than the smear, what do you think? Other than that, it looks really good. Okay. Well, he noticed the smear. <gasps> Shocking. <laughs> so here's our final painting with some smear. Um, hope you guys had fun. And if you have suggestions, just hit me up on Facebook. I Art by Wendy Smalley. Or you can check me on Instagram at drunkenatwendy.designs.